Okay, we're recording. So we got Kyle. Kyle? Yeah. I don't even know if we're going to use this podcast, but you wanted to meet with me to, to ask some questions more for your stuff. And uh, the questions you were asking were really about me a little bit. So I figured, you know what? We're going to record a podcast. One tidbit before we even get started is you are the person that draw our that drew our logo. Yeah. You're probably what? Were you the first? That's one of my proudest things. Yeah. <laughs> do you look at that logo and go, holy crap. I love like, seeing it around. It's awesome. How did you? So like, I got to go back and I don't even know what time that was. You were, how old were you probably? Well, you guys gave me my first job. I think maybe even 16 around there. Yeah. Maybe a little older. Right. It was so amazing. Yeah. You, you, uh, and you, you dabbled, you drew a little bit. Yeah. I love it. And I don't know stuff. if I, did I give you that thing or were we like, we need decals or, I mean, how did that, can you remember how that kind of came up? Uh, boy, I don't really, uh, other than I do remember you guys saying certain things like, dude, draw hounds, draw bears, yeah. draw cougars, draw. Yeah. Cause back then we were doing more t-shirts. I think yeah. we were really into the t-shirts, yeah. the decals and, uh, were we in the house still? Or we do we move into the shop yet? Definitely in the house and in this little the little thing garage. The house. Yeah. <laughs> the thing. Yeah. <laughs> we call it a shed mostly. Some yeah. people call it a small one car garage. Well anyway, so you you uh you drew those two dogs. And at the time we didn't know how much those things were gonna become our logo. You know what I mean? Like it no. was just like um <laughs> It, but it's like it's weird how something will happen in that one time you know from a 16 year old i know it's and, so, uh, weird. so kyle last name stinnerson yeah so you you were our neighbor like yeah. you lived across the street and uh and i don't even know what we just needed some help at some point but you're probably the first employee of w like i was still working at I intel think so. yeah you were i was i was at intel and you would help <laughs> laura she had bradley probably and and as things were taken off i just want to say right now I, I wanted to say this. Uh, that was my first job. That was such an incredible experience. I learned so many things. I talked on the phone. I was so scared. Uh, <laughs> you guys had me, yeah, That's working the, with graphic art. I, I'm just so thankful for that. Yeah. No, that you mentioned the phone. And uh, I think a lot of people forget how important phone conversations are in the adult world. You know what I mean? Like, like my son, I make him call if he's got to order a little RC part or whatever. I make him call the person for the <laughs> story because I'm like, you know what? I don't want Ky no, no offense, Kyle, but I'm like, I don't want that Kyle kid here yeah. to show up on first day and he's awkward. And it's not just you. I've had employee after employee after employee. They're Same just thing. awkward on the phone. They're, they're, it's nervous. It's, yeah. When that phone rings, it's, a it's skill. like, and it's like, oh my God, there's a phone ring yep. and I got to answer the phone. Not, not to be like, hey, bud, what's up? You want to go yeah. to the park or whatever, but you got to, this person might have some some questions for me that I don't know. Oh yeah, and so that happened. That's interesting. You mentioned that. That's <laughs> that's one of my biggest um, challenges that for an employee. That a lot of times we just kick them on the phones right away because we know they're going to crash and burn. We know they're going to be like anxious and yeah. you know, and so that that's fun. But so so you learned. We just kick and back then we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, honestly, like zero management skills. I still don't have any management skills. <laughs> I'm learning from, from mistake after mistake, but, um, I apologize if I, <laughs> I was probably not a great boss back then. No, I, uh, I think you were actually a super awesome boss. I'm not sure what made you such an awesome boss, except that you were very, you know, kind of easygoing and chill and yeah. sometimes <laughs> there was a point where I was easy going to chill in the beginning. And then, okay. And then I've been, <laughs> sometimes you run into problems you can't be easy going and chill all the time so so what are you doing now uh well designing fire, fire sprinkler systems right for apartment buildings okay um i got my mechanical engineering degree and um that's the job i got and you're not exactly thrilled no which i don't know if i want them to hear that but <laughs> <laughs> if you're hearing this thing he loves his job <laughs> That's how I felt like when I was at Intel. Yeah, and that's so badly what I wanted to talk to you about. It's yeah. just kind of 
that process and of where you. So, so you're wanting to do what you're, you're, you're thinking about trying to do something or, I mean, do you have an idea or I don't really, I ha I've, what I've started doing is putting together the things I love and the things I'm good at. And now I, I want to find something, but I just want to, from you, like, I don't know. And I want to talk to people who know and, and find out if it's a good idea to even pursue that of starting my own business. Yeah. That's a, that's a loaded question, man. I'm sure you've been through like <laughs> the ringer and, and maybe someone wouldn't even take it on if they knew what was coming. Yeah. Yeah. It depends. Um, it depends on what, what your definition is, right? You got to look at what is it that you want out of it, you know, and you know, there's money and then there's fun. Sometimes those two things don't go together too well. You know, the one thing I, I always tell, and I used to get arguments with my dad about this was you have to be a salesman. You have to learn to sell whatever it is like, and I don't mean like a, a, a slimy car salesman, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, but I always tell everybody that I, I talk to, it's like, you should know the process of sales. Like if you really want to succeed because you got to sell yourself you got to sell your business exactly yeah. whatever it is for you to get your job as being a sprinkler designer you had to sell yeah yourself you had to sell your degree you had to sell you know what I mean? you had to tell that employer what it was that he should hire you you sold yeah. something that day right and and you may not realize it but you know a lot of people don't realize it but every day you do something or every day you get a job or whatever you make that transaction you're making a sale and if you don't stop and think about the process of that sale you just go through life and you're just like, oh, okay, whatever. I got a job. I got this. It's like, no, no, to, to be successful, you got to realize the process of the sale. And so that's the first thing I'd, I'd make you think about. It's like, okay, well, what is it that I'm selling and how would I sell it? And, and you know, th that can be challenging. It's not just super simple always. Yeah. Um, so that's my first thing that comes to my mind is, is uh, you don't really have an idea. You just want to do something. <laughs> yeah, it's just this burning, <laughs> burning desire, burning discontent. I don't know, something. What are you good at? <clears throat> oh, man. I mean, first of all. Designing our, logos. I mean, yeah. Yep. <laughs> one shot wonder with double you. you yeah. got, or have you got other big companies? Not big, but medium-sized companies. I used know. Logo. I've thought about that a lot. Yeah. I would love to do that. And I bet I could. I don't know. Yeah. It just depends if you're going to be happy with it. Yeah. But so what is it that you, what do you do for hobbies? I mean, what? Ooh, that's a, uh, my hobbies are, uh, uh, my faith and my church and my family. Right. Yeah. I don't have, I don't, well, I don't think of hobbies as, I don't think I have hobbies that I could use as a business, I guess. Yeah. But, no, and, and I'm just trying to figure out what it is you do when, you know, what your passion is, where, where yeah. are you passionate yeah. at and trying to find that passion is, it can be really difficult. Like it, it's, we kind of fell into it. Um, yeah. Have you talked about this on your podcast mm -mm. before? Oh, wow. Cause like, yeah, I know you guys loved hound hunting yeah. and that was like a big driving factor. Right. Um, but you started out like decals and t-shirts and you didn't know really did you no we started with elk decals like okay like elk hunting because when i i want to say about the time i got us uh so i i first got the the sticker machine i call it it's the cutter you know um i mean we were making window banners so i was buying windshield banners where you just got trucks and stuff and so we'd put we'd put redneck off roads on our decals and yeah put all the decals on the back window, you know, if, if you, you know, uh, the four decals and the Calvin pissing on Chevy or, yeah. you know, whichever decal it was, we'd, we'd throw on our trucks. And I kind of got tired of spending like 40, 50 bucks on the decal. You know what I mean? And so there was, there's a point where, uh, I, it was like, I had three decals and it was like 60 bucks a piece. And it was like $150. And I just was at Intel one day and I'm like, I wonder if I could just buy that machine and make these myself. You know what I mean? Like wow. how much have I spent? That decal machine can't be that much. And I think the decal machine cost 
maybe six or seven hundred bucks. You know, it was, it was somewhere around there. Maybe I think I spent like twelve hundred bucks when I first got that machine. And I just looked at it and go, man, I spent one hundred fifty dollars. I spent one tenth of that machine already in putting in somebody else's machine. <clears throat> I was like, shit, if I ten do times. ten times more, done. I own the machine. And of course, that gave me the drive to go do something, right? And so once I got that machine, I uh, I wanted to put it to work, <clears throat> and so I went to Woody's Off Road, you know, down there on St. John's. Yeah. And I just I I told him I said because well, I, I seen him have those banners, you know, and the window banners, and I said I can I can cut those banners for you. And I mean, they took advantage of me. I, mean, I cut those things for dirt, nothing. Like I would <laughs> yeah. never do that deal again. But but I wanted that. You know, they want they were gonna. Basically, it was a twelve hundred dollar job, and to me, I was looking at like that was my machine, you know. So I could do one job, and it, it took me a week or two to peel them all. You know, they had little tiny wood, yeah, woodies off roads. I was doing that too. Yeah. yeah, and so, so I think he ordered like you know a couple hundred, um, you know, four inch little decals at forty five cents a piece, or oh, you know, and then wow. some windshield banners at three dollars a piece. I'm, I'm paying sixty dollars when I got them done, but this guy's you know he. <laughs> As a business, he knew how to leverage it. So he said, I'll take a hundred of them at and yeah. you know, three dollars. And of course, I couldn't tell him no. You know, what I mean, I'm looking at the cost of the material and not factoring in my wage. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was not a sustainable um model for me. You know what I mean? The amount of effort and work that yeah. I put into it to build that job lost money, Do hands you think down. The selling yourself thing came in like you didn't do it right. And that's why it happened. Or? No, I, I, uh, I wanted the the money so bad, yeah, that I just said yes, yeah. You know what I mean? He was like, okay, three dollars for the windshield banners, and he may have, he probably got them for that. You know, he he probably found some other guy that had maybe. A, you know, so so I don't necessarily think he was lying to me. He probably did cut me down. You know, he probably. he may have been getting them for four fifty, and he just yeah. said three. You know, in business, sometimes you throw that that number to just see where they why not you know (laughs) and i just took it you know just took line to sink it was like done you know yeah uh but it paid my machine off you know yeah first one job i had to work a a week or week and a half yeah you know i probably worked for pennies but it paid for the whole machine and so um that was my first experience with my first transaction my first real transaction probably with with the business was that Woody's off road where I just bought and I made windshield banners and and uh, uh we uh, we did that and then we went to the shows and we would you know sell yeah. the elk decals and we'd make you know the tailgate ones and we'd sell those for like 30 bucks or 40 bucks and you know the decals for 10. And so there was I, I wasn't structured in how I priced everything. I just threw a number out on what yeah. I thought would would pay. And those, you know, we'd we'd start making transact I don't want to say making money but we'd make transactions that way. Yeah. And so that was just my learning curve. It was it was just that sticker machine. The brilliant part about it was, you know, the vinyl doesn't cost hardly anything. The machine, you know, it cost a thousand bucks or whatever, which Yeah, it, but you paid it off. Yeah. So I did it in one job. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, it was like you could you could do something and somebody could jump in that way you know what i mean you find that one job you do your investment and you got to pay for that investment right out the gate but at some point you got to grow and make it a business you yeah. know what I mean? so that wasn't sustainable part, right <laughs> um but no that's that's probably the exact beginning of and it was before me and laura i mean it was i was i was single and like i said i just got tired of paying 60 bucks for a, a windshield banner so i bought a machine and i ended up making it for three bucks yeah <laughs> it made somebody else them for three bucks and i was like well this guy was making 60 <laughs> I was a smart dumbass that was like, I'll get a machine and I'll make them for three dollars. <laughs> so, but you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, it, it got me excited about doing something, and and that's where it kind of um, started. You know, again, elk, deer. Yeah. It was just doing something, and probably for me, it was it was about trucks. You know, what I mean, like if you if I really nailed it down, I wasn't real. I wasn't into hounds. I'd gotten a hound yeah. about that time. Okay. So the hounds weren't my passion. You know, this W Hunt supply was not even on the radar. You know, I had zero so idea of what would become of that decision. Um, I probably had, I was passionate about the trucks. You know, I was yeah. passionate about putting a, a stupid sticker on my truck. Sure. And, and, uh, and so I, I chased that trying to save money. And, uh, after 
you know, after a time and time, it was like, I guess the, the next big step would be, we went to the, the shows, the sportsman shows, we sold decals, we, uh, would camo wrap trucks. So we had, you know, trucks yeah, we'd, we'd bring in too. and we'd, we'd wrap them in cam again. It was about the truck for us, you know, to me, it was, yeah. it was that truck. And so that camo in the truck. Yeah. And, uh, that was my passion, I guess, at the time I didn't foresee the, the hunting stuff. Yeah. And then slowly as the hounds started taking over my life, the trucks became less important and the dogs yeah. became my new passion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for, for W where are we at now, I have to say it's, it's, it's Laura, you know, because Laura, um, was working part-time at her dad's office and she just didn't want to, she had Bradley and she, she didn't want to. And so what we, we decided was, well, why don't you work on this W yeah. and try to make enough money to, yeah. to pay for her part-time job. And it wasn't, it wasn't really like set out that it's like, you're going to do this. And then later I'm going to, I'm going to quit. It was just like, Hey, this, there's a little bit of money Replace here that we that. make. We can make yeah. your part-time position. You work part-time yeah. on W, you, you at least make a little bit of money because we couldn't afford a single income. I mean, yeah. we, it's a, at the point we, we were not single income. So, so then she quit her job and she built a website, which is she a whole different. By herself. Well, it was, it was a paid website. You, so you pay, she just puts the products on oh, okay. the pictures. Okay. Yeah. Real rudimentary, you yeah. know, um, just, it was like, I think it was called pinnacle card at one, one point, you know, you paid 600 bucks and you had this shopping cart and yeah. And she set it up, you know, and at the time, you know, it wasn't, she wasn't a technical person. We didn't know, you know, we just you put this picture up. It loaded slow. It was really sluggish. I mean, the, the website was nothing like what we have now, um, but it got us started and then and then um big game houndsman was a messaging board it's kind of like facebook but back then it was everybody's on these messaging forums yeah and that got shut off you know uh, there was a big fight on there and the owner of it shut it down and so i knew the owner because i was advertising a little bit with him and uh, i said well hey what would you sell me the that website for and so i put that forum back up oh i remember which was like um you know think of it like the facebook of 1990 or 2002 or 2003, you know, yeah. I mean, whatever it was. And that was where all the houndsmen kind of joined and talked and whatever. And, and so we were able to piggyback off of that. We got our name built off of that to W graphics at the time. Yeah. And, and it just slowly, you know, once we started selling hound supplies and we started, you know, getting into the dog stuff and, and it just took off and it came to a point where, um, Laura had, Tyler may, you know, and, and so after Tyler was born, she just couldn't run, yeah. you know, the business was growing, you got two kids growing and I'm at Intel and it was just getting too much for her. You know, it was starting to grow. And so 2012, when Tyler may was born, you know, my wife pretty much broke down and was like, yeah. Hey, you either, we either got to shut W down or you got to, um, come out, quit Intel. Yeah. And to be honest, Shutting W down wasn't an option because we couldn't afford it. I mean, my Intel salary would not afford what, you know, yeah. our expense. We'd had it. We'd had to make some serious changes, you know, as far as um, probably get rid of the property. You know, we have five acres yeah. here. I, I don't think we would have been able to yeah. um, afford the five acres that we had, you know. So we, there would have just been some life decisions that I really did not want to give up. I did not want to. We, we had a crappy house, you know, it was like 1100 square foot, really small home, you know, I don't say yeah. crappy, but it was, <laughs> you know, the siding wasn't painted the same, yeah. you know, I mean, it was just real rough. You know, we just didn't, didn't, uh, let's say take care of it or whatever, but it was just small. You know, yeah. it, we, when we bought that property, me and Laura bought the property, uh, the house for the property, yeah. not for the house. We didn't look at the house and go, oh my God, this is the best house ever. We looked yeah. at the five acres and go, this is five acres. It's yeah. got a roof. We can sleep here, yeah. but we get our land. You know what I mean? So we yeah. were really wanting land. We wanted space yeah. back then. And uh, so we bought that and it was a, a gamble. You know what I mean? We kind of jumped in over our heads, you know, financially when we made that decision. So anyways, long story short, I couldn't quit Intel. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, um, well, no, no, I'm well, sorry. I, I couldn't quit W. Yeah. 
because I, my Intel pay did not cover all of the expenses we needed, you know? So, and so we would have had to make some serious changes. You know, we could have done it, but we had had to yeah, make some serious changes. So we took the, the gamble and W was just showing enough life. Yeah. So like, was, were you making more money at W than Intel by then? Or like, I'm trying to think, you know, how you, that math. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough back then because my books were not as okay. sharp. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't, I wasn't a businessman. So it yeah. wasn't like I could just pull up the books and go a P and L statement and this, yeah. and that. it was just all a whirlwind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this guy wants a, 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 yeah. a t, you know, Tritronics, he give him money and we give this money over to this person. And, you know, yeah. I mean, and we never really calculated, yeah. you know, the expense and the, do you think you should have been yes. a lot sharper yes. about it? Yes. If you're going to do a business to, yeah. to grow and be successful, yeah. we were very lucky. Yeah. And the fact that I think that's pretty common. People yeah. don't know what they're doing. The, the, absolutely. They don't because we, uh, you know, the, there was a, a, a couple points where we were able to pull some, we had some reserves that bailed out W. You know what I mean? So there was some oh, serious yeah. points that we went from low <laughs> states. Like, you know, at one point we had to sell horse trailer. Or, you know what I mean? We always had to look okay. around and sell something or, yeah. or we'd have a little stash here. And, and so we were all in, like there was a couple of times it was like, now I, I, I'd be a lot more nervous about it. Back then I was, it was just like, it, it was all we had. So, yeah. so anyways, to answer that question, um, I, I forgot my train of thought here, but it, yes, the, the, the books, I, I do recommend getting books and watching your books from the beginning from the beginning gonna, yeah you know that's and and i honestly watch shows like the shark tank uh -huh. watch shows like uh the prophet you yeah. know marcus limonis those shows are really helpful for me you actually learn a lot more than you would think yeah 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 because i'm like okay you know what i mean like just watching him and there's you know situations where i don't necessarily always agree with them you know they're yeah they're they're but they have the the business principles and so that makes me think about it and go back and go, okay, well, I, I damn sure don't want to go back to, to selling decals for $3 a windshield when yeah. it cost me, you know, more than that in labor probably to build them. You know what I mean? Like if I just looked at the, the product cost, it's like, oh yeah, you can, that's cheap. You can do that. But then you don't look at the labor, the yeah. packaging, yeah. the shipping, all the process to make that customer get the, the yeah. deal. Um, it's easy to overlook that. It's easy to look at the, the the easy numbers, which is like, oh, I paid, you know, yeah, you know, two dollars or three dollars for a sheet, you know, one one yard sheet of of paper, and then I paid you know another dollar. So I'm okay. I'm I'm at four dollars for this, but I can do three of them, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm still making you know five dollars on every yeah. one, but shoot, by the time I process all that, and, and I'm like, there's you, not even labor. You know, you yeah. can't pay somebody else to do it or whatever, and so yeah. it worked out. That that first transaction, like I said, I it got you hooked anyway. It got me hooked. I didn't know how much I didn't know at the time. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like at the time, I thought I was like badass. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> well, one, you were. one transaction, <laughs> and I paid for this machine, and I'm yeah. like, woohoo! Now I look back and go, man, I was that was. Can't uh, believe you made it almost. Well, yeah, no, no. you were. Well, gonna but the, but the but the beauty it, of it was. I still had a job at Intel. I didn't need that. Yeah, you had the backup. I was gambling. So you can gamble really rough when you don't yeah. have, you know, when, when you're not relying on it. Yeah. So that's one thing to consider is if you have a job and you're playing with something over here, you can roll the dice pretty, pretty hard. Safe. You know what I mean? And, and 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 take some risks and some yep. gambles that might pay off and get you a head start. Yeah. Um, that if your family, you know, you're feeding your family. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you gotta be a little more careful. You need to make sure you watch the books and make sure, you know, you can't you can't start you know lose everything. That's one of my biggest questions. Is you did that? You were trying to build this business on the side while you were working your full time job, mm -hmm. um, and like that's fairly safe because you have that backup plan. But I, I bet it was so much. Like, was it really hard? So much time, you yeah, just consumed between the two, and so it was. It was a lot of late nights, you know what I mean? Yeah. You'd get off of work and yeah. then you'd come home and you'd work another four or five hours at home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, whether it was 
doing decals or printing yeah. shirts or whatever. And so, um, and again, luckily Laura got to take the lead on some of yeah. that. So she got to, to work some of the yeah. phones and stuff, um, you know, early on, but, but yeah, it was, you were basically working two jobs. I mean, you just figure that you, you have to have the dedication that you got to want it enough that it's like, you get home from one job and it's like, just, you got to get these orders done and you got to get these shirts made or, you know I mean? Yeah. Like, cause we would make, you know, I, I, when we got the screen presses, we'd go make t-shirts and, and yeah. you were a part of that, right? Yeah. And making t-shirts yeah. and how much a pain in the ass that was, <laughs> how many shirts did we mess up? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but you know I mean? We just had to get those t-shirts made yeah. for that order. And I, I don't remember some of the ones we would sell, but we'd have some on our website. But we'd also go out and sell to other people. So we'd go to a biz approach a business and be yeah. like, hey, we can make some yeah. t-shirts for you. Oh, yeah. I remember some. And uh, like the tulip farm. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah. things like that. We'd, 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 we'd get somebody to go make the order. And so we'd, we'd oh, we can make your t-shirts. And yeah. and a lot of times people are really wanting to help somebody new. Yeah. And so they give you the order. Dude, it's. <laughs> <laughs> you probably did the same thing as you did with the. Yeah, I, I do now. or whatever. Um, but yeah, you, and then you you learn it's not as easy to make t-shirts as yeah as you think. You know what I mean? So I went through this process of wanting to do everything myself. You know, so the sticker machine. Yeah, and we still do our decals. And the t-shirts. Some, but a lot of some of them we we order out if they're really popular. We we pay for five hundred at a time and have somebody else do them. It costs us more, but the time and effort that we can focus on something else is better. Yeah. T-shirts are a really good example. Um, I, I, I talked to somebody else that were talking about wanting to make their own T-shirts. And I'm like, I, if you're a brand like, like we are, making your own T-shirts, the process of pressing them is, in my opinion, not the right decision. Yeah. I tried that. And I'm not saying that it couldn't be done, but we're not a T-shirt company. You know what I mean? So if you were if you were gonna make a t-shirt company and get to the screen press and do all these cool things and that and your passion was in the t-shirt making process, that works, right? Ours yeah. wasn't. We just wanted the end product. Yeah. So we would we could try and do a one color design. Maybe sometimes we try and do a two color. We normally screw up the two colors. Yeah. Um and now I can do a six color design from this this guy I work with. Yeah. And he he does them all day long, no problem. He he yeah, that's what he does. He does t-shirts. Yeah. And so for us, um, finding that that learning curve of we don't need to do everything we need to work on our brand and our business and find somebody that's really good at making t-shirts and then negotiate yeah. a price with them pay them for what they do they do t-shirts really good yeah yeah pay We're gonna focus on what we do really good exactly and that's care of your people right and yep. you're yeah yeah so i'm so curious about that part of it too uh, like that iteration process kind of thing where it seems like you guys were almost experimenting. Like, is this working? Nope, it's not working. We're moving to this. Oh, you know, yep. I know the hound uh, collars came along and you made more money with them. Um, and like, I'm just thinking, I think at some point you might have said something like the stickers and the T-shirts. That's like for the big guy. <coughs> you can't. You, you were like, this isn't going to make money unless we get really big with that. Right. Yeah, so, so we've done. So there's some things like we did Tough Girl, which yep. is a, it was a, it was supposed to be like a girls hunting yep. T-shirt. We tried, we dabbled with that. Yep, that didn't succeed. I, I mean, I got a street sweeper in in uh, Virginia that I paid for, and I had to just let walk away at a at a. It, it probably went through an auction or something. It was at a storage center. But I had a street sweeping contract with Walmart. Like there was like five Walmarts over there in Virginia <laughs> that my buddy, you know, was doing it in Texas. And so I jumped in there and, and we thought we we're going to make that run. And it, we lost our ass off. You know, we had the contracts, but I wasn't willing to go over there and run it. You know what I mean? I just wanted, I basically just wanted the money. Um, you know, there was sportsman's decals we were trying to do, which were, were elk hunting and decals yep. on a, as a more consistent level, yeah. you know, not, not just at a show or whatever, but on a website that didn't work. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's so many things that we tried yeah. that didn't work, you know, making our t-shirts tree dog wear, yeah. you know, um, which was hound t-shirts just on t-shirts Th that didn't work. 
And most of the time I, I go back and go, I just wasn't focused enough on it. You know what I mean? It was, um, could we have made it work? Mm. I think some of those, yes, I could have probably made fly, but I always lean back to double you, you know, and I didn't know it at the time. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that I was focusing on building a brand, but what were we, where we really, um, resonated. And I, I use the word resonate because it's like, you get in this, if you get in this section of, of work that you do really good and you it's get good feedback belong. and you get customers, yeah. it's like you can put in one times the work and get two times the results. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's yeah. a weird thing, but, um, it's like, you got to work where you resonate, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's like doubling your work for whatever reason. I don't quite understand it, but it's like, you get in this little space yeah, and everything just starts clicking. And you hope that's a space that you want to be in because that's where everything's in. So that's what happened with W is that's where everything started to, to click and, and, and people resonated. And so we connected with customers yeah. in that space and, and it was like, you put in one times the work and you get out two times the effort and that's where you grow. I mean, that's, so it's, it's really hard to tell somebody, well, oh, you got to do X, Y, and Z. I mean, you look at a book you read a book, you can, you can read all these things and they tell you, well, do this, do that, do that. But at the end of the day, it's like, it is a little mini experiments that yeah. you're doing. And then you, when you, but you got to look at those results and, and a smart guy would know when he's, when he's seeing the results he wants. I, I'm not, I, I didn't, I wasn't smart. I just did it by luck sometimes, you know, maybe I always, I always liken it to, you know, getting petted by a dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're, a dog gets petted, you know, so, so we got petted in that resonation. When that, when we get found that spot that was getting resonated, it's like getting petted. It's like, Oh, that's awesome. And so naturally we did more of that. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't that I realized, Oh, I'm in my spot here. You know, I, I didn't realize I was in the sweet no, spot. Okay. We just knew, I mean, you just naturally was like customer service, man, people really like this customer service or whatever it was that we were doing. So we just kept doing it. Yeah. And, and now I look back and now I want to be methodical about it. You know what I mean? Now, now I don't want to do it by accident. I try to do it by purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now I look at it and, and really try to dissect things sometimes more than I should, but, okay. but, but yeah, I always look at that. All the failures I had. Um, number one, I didn't dedicate the resource to it. I wasn't focused on it. So I'll just take tough girl, for example, you know, we had, and we made shirts with a, a, a design that we did that said tough girl. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I don't know if it'd be like Proist. There's a, there's a hunting female hunting line like called Proist. You know, we were probably before them, but you know, maybe at the same time, I don't know. But anyways, it was our, our desire was to do women's hunting, you know, apparel. And we started with t-shirts. And so we got into Wilco. We got into sportsman's warehouse. We had ours in some local stores. Yeah. And, and if you'd really dug in and focused on it, you probably could have. Yeah, we had, but the problem was we'd go load them up and, uh, but we never, we, we forgot, you know, it wasn't so passionate that we were back in that yeah. store checking on it and being yeah. like, Hey, how's things going? Let yeah. me get your restock. If we would have fed that beast. Yeah. I think we would have flourished a little bit better. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but it was just, it got to the point where it was like, we had nine stores or I don't, it was like nine or 12 stores that we yeah. had that we had a, a, a station, whatever you call it, you know, where the clothing is. And, and so we'd put in a few of these designs, a few of those designs and they'd sell. I mean, and we call you know, at first and they're like, yeah, they sold out. You know what I mean? It was, um, but we never, you got to follow up with those yeah. people. You know what I mean? Like, and, and we maybe, do you think your hearts weren't totally? Yeah. Good? I mean, yeah. the Lord just wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, it was the business. It was the process. You know what I mean? We fell in love with the idea of design, but we didn't follow the process of sales. You know, if I was yeah. to think back on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that would be, we didn't sell it. Right. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. built it and we, we made the initial sale, you know what I mean? But there's just a lot more into it than just getting the one transaction. You know what I mean? Like W didn't take off because we got one transaction and, and, or one, you know, we, take money from this one customer and we're like, Oh, peace out. You know, it, it's a relationship. Yeah. And so 
you really got to think about it. And, and I'm kind of coming off the cuff as I think about some of these questions, but <laughs> it's, it's really a relationship that yeah. you're working with your customers, yeah. whatever your customers is. In that case, our customers were the sales managers at, at Sportsman's Warehouse and at Wilco and the purchasing managers. You know, we had to go up to Seattle and meet the purchasing manager for, you know, XYZ company yeah. or whatever. So and, I'm thinking in some way, it seems like you you were able your heart was all in and you were able to connect to the houndsman people mm -hmm. but you you could have done the same thing with those those uh sales or uh purchasers and stuff but and made that relationship and but who knows what would happen there. well yeah it was, it, it was fun for me to talk to the houndsman you know what i mean so yeah. so that's probably why yeah you know when, when i joked that i'm like man i i just found it by accident but probably naturally when i talked to a houndsman I was like, oh, he's talking yeah. about cougars and bears and dogs, yeah. and I like this. And yeah. so, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we would take that time. We, we connected with that yeah. person on yeah. a different level. And yeah. then the transaction was, you know, a, a transaction. And so, you know, that part of it was uh, really cool. You know, so I think, I think that's a process that you don't really realize. We can't pause here for a minute. Sure. We got some, we got some guests here, some, some Kyle's guests. All right, we got some neighbors. So, does that make sense? Yeah, and I think that kind of goes back to the question of, of, uh, you know, what I because I think about it a lot. I, I try to figure out how did I get to this point? Yeah, you know, because I don't. I, I mean, it's not like I read a book. I didn't go to <laughs> school for this. I made a lot of mistakes. So, I mean, the two things I can tell you is, is mistakes. You can't be afraid to make a mistake. Like, period. Like, yeah get used to mistakes because they, they're they happen. gonna happen yeah they're gonna happen and if you let a mistake scare you or or i don't want to say slow you down because sometimes you need to slow down you know i mean you, if you're having too many mistakes you got to slow down that's why the books are, are good to to catch those um and then the other thing is is you really the sales process and i like i said i got employees and i tell them i said if you, you know, they ask, you know, studying or whatever. And I said, if there's one thing you should know here is you should know the process of sales, the, the whole flow of the sale. I said, you should be able to go to a used car lot and become a salesman at that used car lot. Now, don't bring that shit to me. You know, that's not how I want my sales guys to be. Right. But I want them to understand the process so that the customer, you know, yeah. where the customer is interested and they, the customer has a problem and you got to fix the problem. And you know what I mean? And, but we want to do it above board. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I want to be open with my yeah. customers that yeah. when you come to me with a problem, you want to be that different sales. I want to yeah. find your solution. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be like, I'm, I got this car, so I'm going to make you fit into this, yeah. you know, junk car here. No, I want to figure out, well, what do you want? You know yeah. I mean? And, and, and so in our minds, we don't do this, the, the slimy sales tactics or yeah. anything like that. None of that should ever happen here. And, yeah. and I don't want it to, but I always tell people you should know that process because those yeah. slimy salesmen that can sell shit cars, like they know the process. Yeah. And so if you can take that process and do it a and, better way, exactly. Do yeah. it a better way. Do it uh, the right way. Yeah. The right way of sales. You know, don't, don't do it to, to be slime, you know, salesmen that are selling used cars do it to help the customer that customer will appreciate it you know if you do it the right way and, and stand behind it whatever decision you you figure out whatever you make if it's the wrong decision stand behind it like hey we screwed up if this isn't the right one or whatever we got to undo the sale no problem we're not here to make the sale we're here to make the customer so so that's what i always you know tell people is, is yeah man read a book about sales like that wow you know helps a lot and it doesn't matter what you're doing I, I'd say sell a pencil, you know what I mean? Take whatever it is and just think about how you would sell the pencil, you know, so you can look at that process. And that means if you're getting a job, you're selling yourself, you're selling your resume, yeah. you're selling your, your, your background. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to get a new job, you know what I mean? Like you have to go through that sales process and there's you know, slimy ways of doing it. And there's really nice ways of doing it. And, and I always want to do the right, right way. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, it's still a sales process. It's customer calls us, they have a problem. And I tell people all the time, but man, at W sometimes you don't get, don't pat yourself on the back because a lot of times the customer already knows how to fix their problem. So they know I need a TT 15 and all you gotta do is take the money and transaction. And it's like that. And so I tell people all the time, I'm like, don't, don't think that's sales. 
Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Somebody comes to you and says, hey, I need this. Um, you know, yeah. They already know what they need. Yeah. All they need is, you know, you have, the, they have the, the problem and they know you have the solution and they just come ask you for the solution. Yeah. I'm like, that's, that's not fine. the sales process. Right. That, that's fun. That's easy. You want yeah. more of that. You know, that's, that's, those are always yeah. awesome problems for us to have. It's like, well, you got money. We got a caller. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can figure this out. <laughs> Let me, how yeah. about I send you the caller and you send me the yeah. money. And <laughs> so, so that's a, you know, that's easy, but it's the guys that are like, man, I don't know if I should upgrade or yeah. whatever. And, and the answer isn't always yes. It's like, well, you know, maybe, you know, maybe the alpha 100 is right for you. Maybe you don't need the 200, yeah. you know, if, if you know, with this, I'd use the 200 because, there's people who don't like the maps. And when they call me and tell them, I'm like, man, some people really hate these maps. You know, if you aren't going to like that, let us know. You may be better off with the Alpha yeah. 100, you know, or whatever it is. There's, it, it's not a fit for everybody. It's not one size fits all. So, um, can, anyways, go keep going. You have another been, question? I have something, uh, I've been learning a lot about like these different things. You said that resonate concept mm -hmm. and, and I'm thinking I've been learning about things like where your your passions, your talents, your skills um, and what you want to accomplish line up. It's from a show uh, yeah. by this guy, Ken Coleman. But um, and I was thinking, like, do you, for example, for you, were you always. Do you think you had a talent of uh, communication, people, sales, whatever, <clears throat> and now that's coming to the front and shining yeah so not communication okay my talent and i mentioned this right in the beginning when you, yeah. before we start recording what i missed about intel you remember that yeah problem solving problem solving so i was really i'm a really technical mind yeah so so my talent was the technical side of this technology like i could understand the technical yeah. basis of that and so um, as I got into resonation, I can, I can look at the caller and mentally I can picture what's happening yeah, yeah. to that caller and how it's, how it's linking up in the yeah. boot up process and this, and then, you know, yeah. it's got a sequence, a startup sequence. It's not just, you turn the caller on and, and magic happens. It's like, okay, it's got to go through its GPS fix. It's got to go through this and it starts transmitting the, the transmission. And then it goes over the airways to this device. And so that, that process, when I look at something, I, mm -hmm. I technically dissect it. And, you're and I look for problems, too. you know, it's the I mean? same thing, right? You're yeah. Good with, you're good with cars. Too. I'm good with mechanical yeah, stuff, mechanical you know, so, stuff. Yep. so electrical mechanical stuff. I just have a, a good base. I mean, I spent 14 years at Intel working on that stuff. I mean, that's where I, I grew up. I, I always say, you know, I got college, I got my electronics degree, didn't hardly use any of that electronics degree in a call in my job, but I got in there and I was just a problem solver. So I would get in there and I'd look at the technical aspects of the computer chips and how they were running and yeah. the, the layers. And and so I knew the computer chip side yeah. and I had really good mentors over there at Intel, some really smart, you know, uh, principal engineers and stuff like that, that, that would just sit down and explain stuff to me. And I would, I would get it. Yeah. You know what I mean, so they'd explain it to me in a way that I got it. <laughs> and, and they, that was, that's not for everybody. You know, like, like yeah. my wife, she's not a technical person. You know, you could try to explain that to her and yeah. it's just, She's not going to get it, you know, but, but me, he would be like, okay, a layer of silicone and a layer of poly and we yeah. put this and I could, and mentally I could be like, that's how it works. You know? Yeah. And, and so that was my, I don't want to say superpower or whatever, but yeah. that was my resignation is I had the technical s side. And so yeah. as Garmin came in, you know, uh, I, as a houndsman had the technical side, so I could look at the technology and the hounds and I could bridge that gap yeah. a little bit. And so that's where I kind of found my, my niche or whatever. Yeah. I, I kind of bridged a gap between the dogs and this technology company. And so I was that bridge. I was just a lot, you know, some, some of that was just luck. Me being an Intel coming from Intel talking technology. I could talk to Garmin. I could talk to the houndsman. I could, you know, I, I could do both of them. And so that, yeah. you know, if, if, so it wasn't communication for me. I've okay. never been a really good communicator. Okay. Um, Ask my wife. <laughs> I suck at communication. So you just worked on that one. You've gotten way better. Yeah, practice. Yeah, practice. Practice doesn't make perfect, but yeah. it makes it makes yeah. it better. Um, and so, just learning. Yeah. What about uh, Laura? What was her like talent that just 
really kind of resonated or can you see that? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, she would know way better. I'm sure. But. I don't think so, but maybe, um, she, she is definitely a communicator way, way better than I am. Like yeah. as far as communication goes, um, she's also ironically kind of a risk taker. You know what I mean? She's the one that kind of kicked me out of, <laughs> you know, I had this job at Intel and I had these gold, what we call the golden handcuffs. You know what I mean? I had a good package. Yeah. I had a, yeah. you know, you get the health insurance. Oh, we had to walk away from health insurance. You know what I mean? Like, oh, there's just things we oh, had to do no, when yeah. we, when I left Intel and, and she was just like along for the ride. You know what I mean? She's just like, yeah, let's go. And and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. you know, I was like, yeah, so risky. Um, Sure. And so sometimes she'll, she is that way, you know, she's so that, that part of it. And she's a really hard, she's a mentally a really tough person. Like, like, and I don't mean like, I mean, like she's, I gotta explain it careful, but um, like she'll work out uh -huh. and she is mentally tough. Like she will push herself riding that bicycle or running on a treadmill or what i'm like yeah. i give up after i'm like yeah. i'm dying and you yeah. know what i mean like i i'm not a mentally tough person that works out you yeah. know she is like she can push herself past that point um so I, I can do it like hunting if i'm up in the woods like climbing a mountain yeah. or whatever i can do if i have a goal for me i can go go for that but she can do it on a treadmill i can't you know what i mean like for her for whatever that is i don't i don't know what it is but i i just know that yeah um so, so that part of it, she's really mentally strong. So when the company was, you know, you were hitting some brutal struggles and with the company or something, I don't know, she was able to keep a level head and. Yeah. She just, she just works through it. Yeah. She's just, she just powers through yeah. that hardship, you know, yeah. as, as I call it, like powering through the pain process. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, that's there's the pain. Thing. Yeah. And that's why I use working out is because yeah. like, that's the best way I can describe it is, is yeah. she gets this pain in the workout but she motors through it. Yeah. Me, I'm like, I'm hurting. <laughs> you know, my yeah. legs hurting. I'm like, yeah. I should probably take a break now. I'm going to drink a water. I'll find something yeah. to to not continue yeah. um, a workout. Now, like I said, on a mountain, I'm, I'm a totally different person. Most of the time, yeah. like if I'm going, if I got my sight set on that, I'm going to get to this elevation of this camp. Yeah. I can, I can motor through that For because that I goal. see something. Yeah. I have a, and I don't know why it is. Yeah. I can't do it in a workout room. Yeah. Or I'll, I, I won't say I can't. Yeah. I talk myself out of it in the workout <laughs> room. And so that's a feature about her that yeah, that she will to the detriment sometimes. I'm like, you know, she will be trying to push a a square pin through a round hole and she'll keep pushing and I'm like, baby, let's let's go find a different way, you know what I mean? Like yeah. You know, so sometimes that's not always good, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, there's there's pluses and minuses to, to everything, yep. everything. Yeah. And so sometimes she will push, try to push through something that you just can't push through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or it's not, it's not effective to push through. It's yeah. like it's back up, think way around it. You yeah. know, so you got to have a, a, a miss and match. And so she's really good with that. Like we kind of are opposites in that respect. Is yeah, she wants to motor through something. I want to figure out a smart way through it. Yeah, um, you know, and, and whether Maybe that's even the lazy way or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the and a lot of times way. that's even like going to the dogs. Like, yeah. Like if, if the dogs are treed, like in hunting, she wants to go straight through there, like just drop off cliffs and stuff. And I'm like, no, nah, we're going to take this ridge line. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm a more calculated sure. when I look at the map and I want to come down, yeah. um, you know, because, and, and honestly, she could get there faster. Yeah. You know, she goes straight down a straight up, get <laughs> but, but she could also get hurt. Yeah. You know, like there's also yeah. more risk in that, yeah. that situation. And for me, I use a more calculated yeah. way. I look at the ridge lines. I look at how can I get through this bluff or this canyon or whatever, yeah. but it takes more time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's there's pluses and minuses to both ways. I'm not saying one way is right, one way yeah. is wrong. There's definitely times that I toot that we got to go around this ridge and yeah. and we end up trying her way and it's like, oh shit, it was yeah. a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. You know, sure. I thought we were going to die off this cliff and it was like, yeah, it wasn't that bad. And, yeah. you know, so so there's definitely times that we should have gone her way because yeah, straight, straight in and straight out was definitely the better way. And, and there's times that my way, you know, we go straight in straight out her way and we, we run into a, yeah. a 30 foot cliff and it's like, yeah, you're not just coming off yeah. of that. So now we got to back up or, yeah. so 
anyways, I kind of liken that to the business too. Our, our mentalities are kind of the same way. Yeah. Sometimes she's wanting to go straight through and, 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 sure. and fight through the pain yeah. is the best way I can describe it. Cause I, I relate to yeah. working out and I want to be a lot more careful. Yeah. So, so that's some of the, a little bit of the talent and stuff. And then the passion I feel like is some of the, yeah, you guys are, you're passionate about the dogs. You're passionate about the people. Um, is there anything else there like that you're passionate about that kind of lines I'm up? passionate about business now. Yeah. I wasn't at the time. Yeah. So I didn't do the business to start the business. Yeah. But now um, <laughs> that's been my, you know, I, I, yeah. I like to fix problems. That business yeah. has become my so cool. my job. You know what I mean? And, and good and bad. Some of it's I, I, I don't like. I don't like some of the stress. I don't like some of the decisions I got to make as they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, I don't like the. Um, I really don't like the, the accountability, um, for employees. You know what I mean? Like as I make these decisions and I have more uh, team members, it all of them. it's like, man, yeah. I'm not, it's no longer like my family's is most important to me too. You know, so I got yeah. not only my family, but now I got yeah six families. You know what I mean? So it's like, as you grow, that yeah. pressure gets more and that part of it, it, it makes you try to take less risk. You know what I mean? So, so you kind of get in this mode. Like when I was an Intel, like, yeah, just Ooh, throw the dice. Absolutely. Now I'm like, I got to really think I'm not afraid to take risk, but it's, it's mitigated. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I walk into the casino and I'm not dropping half of it on, on yeah. black. Like I could, if yeah. I, if I really wanted to, when I was working at Intel, I was like, yeah. I don't care about this money. I can lose this much, whatever. Now I'm like, okay, I got, you know, I got my $500. Let me, we throw fifty dollars on blacker, yeah. whatever I can afford to to yeah. lose. You know, I, I I trim my bets a little bit, and I look for uh, performance. You know what I mean? So I, I I I limit my my entry in the beginning, and I look for early performance. And I look at the early performance, mm -hmm. I see what it is, sure. and then I'll invest a little bit more in it. You yeah. know, and so, um, you know that that that's difficult. You know, so that part of it. It gets, you know, you just, you don't see that coming until you're there and you're looking at yeah. going, okay, this person's relying on me, this yeah. business being here. Yeah. So now it's no longer just, oh, well, if, if this don't work out, I can go get another job. I, uh, yeah. Everybody's got to get another job. So I, I really, I don't like that part. Um, yeah. It is, you know, it's part of it. You know, there's, there's some benefits to that, you know, so. Could you have, um. Do you think it would have been possible in this business to have stayed just you and Laura? Yeah. Or would that have been a good, like, I don't know. Um, it, for our goals, it would have been really stressful. Uh, the. That's kind of a weird question, maybe. You no, know, it, it, <laughs> it's actually a really a good question because, um, yes, I mean, you could, we could not do what we do now by ourselves. So we, no, we would not be at the not. level it would. No. We would have curtailed our customer service. You know what I mean? So we would have, we wouldn't have been able to ship out as fast. We, you know, and I, and maybe I would have done a, a different model where I'd, I'd use just drop shippers and, and, and build an automated system. Sure. You know, that, that order goes in, email gets shipped out automatically. I mean, I could have so probably done a those smart, those. um, take away the human interaction, yeah. you know, and, and been successful as far as if, if your terms of success were money, I probably could have done that. We probably could have animated or I'm not sorry, automated yeah. the website so that yeah. order comes in and emails go out to, 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 and these shippers who that's what they do. These wholesalers, you know, kind of think like Amazon or whatever, they would ship the product out. And for the most part, most things would happen. Okay. And, and uh, we'd have to deal with a couple issues where something went wrong or whatever, but, that would have been our job. We could, we could, oh, it would be automated enough that you could leave it for a day or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't, we, we would not, we would not have the brand we have now. No. We would not be the company we have we now. Have the relationships. The, you the people, the growth. I would yeah. not, you know, it, I would be, so, so from that standpoint, I don't think it would be a success. You know, for the money standpoint, if, if the, if the Man, goal was make enough money, me and Laura, nobody else yeah that's the route i'd have to go and it would be at the detriment of the customer yeah like the customer would not get the experience the connection 
they would probably not be associated to W as much, you know what I mean? Yeah. Except for, you know, I mean, how are you associated to, to, to Amazon except yeah. for they ship fast? No. You know what I mean? Like that's the only thing you, you do. And, exactly. and so I, I would not want to go that way. I would, no. I would probably just try to sell it to somebody who, who would want to keep the relationship going. And, you yeah. know, if I had to be honest with myself, um, I'd rather see it go. Yeah. By that metric where the customers are taken care of. Yeah. And they're they're valued than than going automated and and trying to go just money. So that's that might be the third thing. It was the your talents and skills line up, your passions line up, and the last one was your impact. And it seems like maybe the impact for you is is like really making a difference, helping people and and um, solving their problems. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say that's probably a good good way to to describe it. Is is yeah we. We have that relationship um, with the customers and try to keep, you know, trying to keep that relationship as we grow gets difficult at times. You know what I mean? Like it, it can be oh, yeah. challenging. Because you were, oh man, to some extent you could, like you knew lots of your customers and stuff. And the more you grow, you just can't. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I still know, we still know a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. We see their names on yeah, the orders. I mean, absolutely. it's like, you know, I can spout off. You know, when somebody comes through, we're like, this sure. is a good customer. <laughs> we don't know every single one of them, but those repeat customers, we see those names. Yeah. And, and the people I have at the shop know them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the, the, the beauty of having a good team is I can, you know, if I don't know the name, I can ask and, and Jess will be like, oh yeah, he orders all the time with us. You know what I mean? So, if I don't know the, the person by name, because I haven't been on the phones in, in a while, you know, I answer the phones occasionally, but the team knows that person. And that's really good. You know, that kind of keeps keeps things in check, you know, so that we know. And I always, we always want to try and take care of our, our loyal customers. You know I mean? I, I, I tell people in the shop all the time, I want the loyal customers the, those those customers who are tied to our brand and our association, those are the ones we care about. The ones that are tied to price and just want the cheapest or whatever. I don't waste a lot of time and energy on those. That's fine. You know, yeah, I mean? they can, yeah. You send the money, we'll ship it out. Whatever, yeah. that's great. The the ones that really engage with us, those are We're gonna invest in them. That's what I want to. That, yeah. That's that's who built our business, yeah. and that's who I owe this business and the service to. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's the way I, I try to think about it. This is. Yeah they i would not have built the business without them and so they're the ones that that it's like they're my family you know what i mean if there's if there's my 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 family family you know yeah. the the employee family and then those customer families and those customer families is not everything if you just bought something from us doesn't mean you're in <laughs> and i'd probably offend somebody who listens to this if, the, if we ever air this podcast but sure. um the the people who care about w those are the people that I really, yeah. Um, I don't want to say lose sleep over, but I, I want to make sure that they are really thought of. You know, good things like we're we're dealing with constant contact. You know, we're gonna we're gonna add in a an email version where we email and communicate a little bit better with our customers. And and one of the big things is is they have this automated process that we'll send you an email if you don't check out or you know what I mean all these things that you see on the. And I've told them I said not nah, we're not doing that to to some of my customers. Like there's some customers I don't care about. You know what I mean? Like they're, they are just come and go or whatever. They're just a, a general population. They're like, I would say like an Amazon crowd or whatever you want to call it. Those guys, if those tricks work, you know, you, you send them a, an email afterwards. Oh, you forgot to check out or whatever. I was like, I get it. But if I have a really customer who's engaged with my business, they trust me. I trust them. I'm like, don't send them stupid emails trying yeah. to, to play tricks, you know, I don't say yeah. tricks, but to communicate and be like, Hey, you didn't check out. Yeah. You know, I'm like, like there's probably a reason they didn't check out and they'll call us when they want to, yeah. you know, do it. And so, um, that part of it, uh, that's the parts of the problems that I try and fix now is like, how can I integrate this communication to give them what they want? Cause maybe they want more communication from us. We send an email once a year. We probably should send a little bit more, you know, and, and connect with them. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I get a, like through this process, I told him, I said, we're sorting my customer list. I'm looking at orders. I'm looking at uh, lifetime sales because these people, my first email is going to be like, Hey, this is new. 
we're trying this platform. If you don't like it, please let us know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I'll take you off the list. My, my goal with this whole email thing is not to make my, my business worse. It's to make it better. Yeah. And you know, so that's like some of the things I'm doing right now. It's just like, you know, talking with them. It's like, Hey, here's the deal. Like I know you, uh, you know, they, they are like, they got all these metrics of what they've done for other companies and stuff. And I'm like, I told them straight, I don't trust you with my customers. Like this is, I, my customers, I trust more than I trust you. So I like what we're doing, but we're going to do it my way. We're going to do it our way in the W way. I'm not going to just, you know, for $400 or $500 a month, or whatever, get this thing where it automatically sends emails to my customers. Like, no, no, that, that's not how, how this is going to work. Like yeah. these customers have been with us from the beginning and I am really loyal to them. And them it took a couple meetings for, for them to really understand that I meant business. So it was like, yeah. you are not just turning on emails on my website yeah. without me hand by hand going through groups and making sure that I touch base. So I haven't touched base. I mean, maybe that's enabled by then. Maybe this email has already gone out by then. I don't know when this podcast will air, if we ever air it. But um, that's some of the meetings I'm going through right now. And like problems is like, how do I build my communication up? with my customers, but not change the relationship. Yeah. You know, so anyways, those are just things that are interesting. And as you, as you start, I would, I would start on that. You know, these are all things that I'm doing late in the business. Yeah. Those are things that should have been done early in the business. You know, if I uh, was to, to do it, your communication style, get, get a relationship with your customers and emails a, a really good one, you know, to, to try to do that with. So, um, you might hit pause. I want to look at my questions. All right. We covered your list pretty good then. Yeah. Most of the questions. We just I checked had. them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know there's other things I need to know if I was thinking about starting my own business, but yeah, I would look at, um, do you listen to podcasts? Yeah. That would try and find some of those podcasts that, um, you are on the business side and entrepreneur side, yeah, marketing side, um, Anyways, um, I got a text here. Uh, so, and the hardest part is finding the idea. Like that's the hardest. That's where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't help you with that, man. I wish, I wish I could. Um, I think of, you know, for, you know, because I, I, I I rack my brain for like Bradley and Tyler. You know, they're young, but I just rack my brain for like. I don't think they're going to be in the, the want to double you or whatever. I don't, I don't know. You know, they, they may not have the same passions I do. They may not oh, yeah. have the same drives. Um, but as I leave this world, I'm like, man, what am I, how am I going to instill them to, to do something or whatever? And, uh -huh. and it's, it's tough. You know I mean? Trying to find that thing that you're passionate about and playing with. And um, the one thing I can tell you is, is business, you know, business sales and marketing. Yeah. Like if nothing else, study the hell out of those things. Yeah. And because those are the things I don't, I, I promise you, I don't have business. They're the ones you learned on the way. <laughs> exactly. I don't have sales. <laughs> and you needed them the most. I, I did a little bit of sales. I, I worked a yeah. job at, at Radio Shack for like six yeah. months is a, is a, I started in the, in the winter. So they did some sales um, at Radio Shack when I worked there. So I had just a tiny bit of like sales and that was kind of like pressure sales because we were on commission and stuff. But but I got a little bit of sales training there that I always kind of revert back to and think about, you know. Um, it's like, man, I that was something that was like, if I say sales training, that, that kind of opened my eyes a little bit. Yeah. It made, again, I like the challenge. So the sales process, it, when I was at Radio Shack, it was the challenge. It was like, can I sell this guy a TV? Or can I sell this guy a cell phone and get my $25 spiff or whatever yeah. it was? You know what I mean? Like, I was, it was like a shark. You're waiting yeah. for somebody at the, at the mall, you know, those people walking by and you're like, that guy right there, I'm going to sell. <laughs> and so we would joke, you know, uh, 17, 18, whatever I was, we would joke about, you know, that was our competition was sales. You know, yeah. it was essentially it was the challenge, the slimy, <laughs> yeah. we were the slimy Still. car salesman, except we were at the radio shack playing. <laughs> you know. And the other thing I always joke about it being at radio shack was, um, this was back when they had the electronic components. So they had the resistors and the diodes okay, and the capacitors. Okay. And I knew all that shit because yeah. I was in college, right? Yeah. Do not, do not get a job at Radio Shack if 
you come out of electronics because you're the kid that gets kicked in the 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 electronic section and uh when you got like a three dollar you know no, you're, bill, <laughs> you're like there's some resistors for 45 <laughs> cents and okay well you need a capa- I mean, you're geeking out you're like you need a switch like resistor two capacitors and we can do this with a, a, a transistor here and we'll get one of these and you know they, they come up with these projects and you're like oh yeah i can fix this this is a cool project and you're like over there in the, the electronics department and you're you're doing a you know nine dollar sale yeah, like while all the other salesmen are over here selling cell phones yeah. and tvs and vc you know what i mean like big ticket items and you get your sales tickets the month and you're like buddy you only sp- you know looks like you sold like a hundred dollars this week <laughs> so and so's already it's one cell phone so that was the downside with yeah. with being a geek working yeah. at, at uh at uh radio, radio shack. shack but but they did teach the sales process and so i kind of learn that a little yeah. bit and and it helped me with with learning how to view the process of the sale and i don't remember yeah. any of that that was you know 20 years ago or whatever but the process of the sale taking that down and then marketing you know what i mean learning and that changes you know you got instagram and facebook and i don't i mean it, that stuff is so um it just changes and just learning the metrics there's people who do really good at it and and i don't know that we do or we don't you know what i mean so we're always playing with it i don't see we're we're not a social media company but we need the social media presence you know what i mean so it's good because it's it's free advertising it's a branding it's you know but you know i don't see a lot of conversions from facebook it's not like they see my post and i see sales come off that post yeah you don't know so it's like, but it's a place for us to engage with customers like we used yeah. to do on the forum and stuff like that. So, so those are the three things that if you're going to study things, business, yeah, sales, marketing, and then, and then just do it good. You know what I mean? Do it by a customer, by, by what yeah. a customer wants. And I'm not going to say we're the best at anything because, but we've, we've built a, a, a brand by accident, you know? I sometimes was sitting there talking with Laura or talking with you. It's like, I never in a million years when we had you drawn that, those two dogs or whatever, it was like, <laughs> you know, that that was the beginning of something, you know I mean? It's yeah. like you think back in that time, if you would have thought what you were doing then is what we're going to be doing, you know, what was that? 2012, 2011, 2010. You know, we were probably 11 years ago that you were drawing that, that logo. Oh. Um, we had no clue what, what it was going to be at the, at the end of the day so yeah i don't know i'd like to find the piece of paper you drew it on where's your scrapbook yeah i have some of those old drawings i don't know if i have that one you should look it for it yeah i hey. might pay that and, and frame that one yeah that'd be so good <laughs> i'd have to buy, buy it from you <laughs> put it at auction hey, well who knows i might have gave it to you at the time yeah probably <laughs> and i probably <laughs> lost it I gotta, it's been gone um, anything else you want to chat on uh, yeah, just a tiny bit of, uh, I was going to say, you're like saying that the idea is the hardest part maybe and what it would be and what to do. But like, I take so much encouragement from the fact that you guys didn't know, but you just tried some stuff. You just went for it and maybe that's, yeah. you find it along the way and that's okay. Yep. If Absolutely. you're going to do it, you got to go for it. Yeah. You can't have, if you got the plan already, and, and maybe there's people who can do this. Yeah. I'm not one of them. That I can just lay out the plan like, we're going to do X, Y, Z. and It's going to be the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that. I get to the first step and I'm like, well, that didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're already, we're already yeah. deviating from yeah. our plan. So yeah, just playing with it. But but being methodical, like if, if you can think about it during the process. So yeah, when something happens. And you can't, you can't infatuate on it. You know what I mean? Like you got to be able to, you pick yourself up and move on. But, yeah. but to think about what it was that you did wrong. Yeah. Personal accountability. Don't, don't blame. If you're blaming somebody else, then this isn't the, the way for you. You know what I mean? Like if, 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 if you, na- and it's natural, it is n- very natural to well, blame somebody else for problems. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. You know, so that's another thing is I always get, okay. This didn't work out. I can't control what they did, but I can control what I did. And where was my, 
where where did I go, wrong? Did I go wrong? And what yeah. what could I have done better? Yep. Maybe it'd fix it, maybe it wouldn't, but there's a lot of situations that I come in with that and it's like, yeah, that didn't work. But I'm not gonna sit there and be like, yeah, it didn't work because he did this or that. Yeah. No, it didn't work because I didn't do this, I didn't do that. And maybe it wouldn't work with him. Maybe I chose the wrong decision or whatever yeah. in that that experiment that we were playing with. Um, but what is it that I can do and what can I take next time? When I come into the situation again, I come in locked load and be like, that sucked. <laughs> I did this and that did not work. And I'm not going to do that again. Um, yeah. And you just learn and it, it, it gets better. So you're going to make mistakes. You, do you think, I want to find that place where I fit, the place where I, I mean, those, those, those things I listed, the passions, the skills, the like, do you think it would have helped to have had that more clear at the beginning or did you feel like you were clear or I think I you know. can, um, I could probably overanalyze and just exactly. I think you time. can overanalyze it. I think you got to kind of go through yeah. and unless you have a really good idea yeah. that you're like, this is what I'm going to execute <laughs> and you make the plan yeah, and just execute to a plan and, and compensate when it goes wrong. Yeah. Um, you just gotta start playing. Gotta try like you just gotta figure something out, whether it's getting a decal machine and making decals yeah. and trying to go to businesses and sell decals or or shirts or or designing logos for for yeah. nobody companies that might turn into W later. Yeah. <laughs> you you just gotta find that that thing that you can do. Yeah. And then and then wait for the opportunities to to pop up. And it's like when you see the opportunity that's when you got to go jump in there. Yeah. And so, I, and I wish I, I had a whole list of ideas, but I don't. Oh know? yeah. So, whatever. so I just look at, at opportunities at W now <laughs> that I'm just waiting for those opportunities that, you know, ideally what I want to see is a product that I can build, um, that fits, fits a, a problem. You know what I mean? And I want to own the process. So the biggest thing about W that I, that I'm trying to fix, is we're just a resale company. So we sell garment yeah, products. Yeah, we sell yeah. this. We have our branded products or our shirts are, are, you know, basically our shirts are all branding. So that helps our, our, our customer branding, but we don't have a lot of products that we make or that we, you know what I mean? So yeah. that's the other thing you got to think about is, are you reselling? Are you, are you a, a store or are you a company that, that builds something? And sometimes I wish we were more of the company that build something. Oh yeah. Because I think I saw that throughout my time here. Like when you were building your antennas and yeah, yeah I think you've always wanted that. Yeah. And so we, yeah. we've done things yeah. to try to get there. Yeah. And, and so like right now we're working on building Merino base layer, you know, where we're, sure. we're going to start taking over some, so we always take shirts and print on them. We still do that, but manufacturing shirts and we yeah. got some some new tree leads that we're going to yeah. try and get manufactured and so yeah. the, we're looking for those products that we can manufacture yeah and then bring in on our own line because there's a lot more security there you know there's a lot more um a lot more control you know what i mean like you're not you're not your business model isn't based off of what garmin's doing yeah you know what i mean like i'm waiting for garmin to, <sighs> to do this or fix that or whatever um you know, or this company in and the the manufacturing process is going down with COVID or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like we need things that we can try to control. And you still can't control everything, you know, with yeah. COVID shipping and, and it's like so many things, but but to give you you know, I, I want something that we can control and that we have. And so we're not reliant on manufacturers to to produce and, and provide for us. You know, yeah. so um, I see something super cool there. And it's like uh, when you're making something and you have that control, you can listen to your customer and you can make the different changes that they're looking for. You yeah. can hear their voice and put it into your product yeah. that you're making. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. something that that I always think about is like, yeah. you know, and I, I wouldn't change anything with W, but yeah, that is one thing I think I would have started with earlier is trying to be more on the manufacturing side sure. and put more effort into the manufacturing side 
because I think the dividends would have provided quicker. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so making something. Well, you still can. Yeah, no, and we do. That's, <laughs> that's one of dynamics. our biggest focuses is on new products. It's like, what can <laughs> we do um, to, to take control of the manufacturing yeah. process and, and, so and do that. Awesome. <clears throat> and I don't know how much more time I got in the business because i want to retire you know in, <laughs> in 10 years yeah i want to be hunting the more you know so my yeah. my ultimate goal is, is not to make money you know what i mean like i'm not here to, to just make a million bucks or whatever I'm, 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 my my goal is, is to get freedom to hunt uh -huh. and so i'm on a short timeline you know what i mean like i'm okay. i'm trying to put the business in a position that it can continue on after me you know what something I mean? that lasts whether i'm still yep. the owner or not yeah i'm my goal is not to be in the shop every day. My goal is yeah. to be on the mountain as much as I can with, with my wife and a camper and, and kids or whatever. Yeah. So, so I'm not going to say that, you know, business is my passion or else I'm, I'm like, I foresee a timeline <laughs> that I roll off and look at things and go, you try that idea. Maybe I'll help some, somebody else out and, you know, just be like the, the shark tank where it's like, I got a little bit of money yeah. here. I'll give this kid some money and that kid some money or whatever. Yeah. But I don't want to be, in the grind you know what I mean? yeah. like I, my goal my passion is to get with my dogs get out in the woods yeah. and, and hunt and so so that is going to limit what my financial output sure. would look like because i don't really that that that's not what i'm passionate it's about you know I'm, I'm not passionate about stacking money in the bank yeah. I'm, I'm passionate about my family yeah my employees and hunting and yeah as as i i i look at and you know, i tell my wife i said my goal is to get the business sustainable that I can step away from it so that it's never. <clears throat> and it's the other thing. I just don't want it to be about buddy. You know, I don't want it to be all oh, go order from buddy, you know, go. It's W so yeah. that I can step away yeah. and the customer still gets the same experience. You don't want to be the brand. I don't want to be the brand, yeah. you know, so I want to be able to step away from them yeah. and the brand can survive or if yeah. I want to go hunting for two weeks yeah. or whatever, those are the things I want to try to do. And I've, I've been working on that. I haven't gotten there yet. Um, but, I'm always thinking about, hey, making sure I got the right people to take care of it, you know, and, and, yeah. and can I step That's away awesome. for a week? Can I step away for a day? Yeah. Can I step away for two weeks? You know, if the answer is no, then I'm, then I'm not meeting my goals. Yeah. My goals <laughs> in the business is, is to be able to do that. So, yeah. well, would you do it again? Would I do it again? The same, well, yeah, the same way. Oh. <laughs> do you think it was all the right, like it all worked together? <laughs> um, The same way. Oh. So I, <laughs> you know, you know, I, this, a, I am you at that point. Um, <laughs> would I do it, it again? <laughs> do I get to go back in time or do I got to start from now? <laughs> like, um, Oh yeah. Seriously. So change. Yeah. Yeah. I would, as far as going to a, a job or owning my own business. Yeah. I probably would have started earlier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I, wouldn't have been afraid to jump, you know, uh, I was afraid to jump at Intel. I had my job. I had my family. I had oh, everything. Oh, I feel that fear big time right now. Yeah. Even thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that part, um, if you can jump when there's money to be made. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Like the, the biggest change in W was when I quit Intel, like, we were going at a trajectory oh, yeah. that was like this. And when I quit, jumped out of Intel, I was scared and I didn't have any other option except for W to make yeah. you know, money. And so we had planted the seeds, the seeds were growing. Yep. And when I jumped in, I started fixing things, you know what I mean? So my passion, my, 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 if there's one thing I pride myself in is, is, problem solving and yep. fixing problems. Yep. So I jumped in and the website and the technology of the website and the, the SEO, you know what I mean? So the, the search engine optimization and the technical side is where I came in and started hammering on the mark. And it wasn't that I was trying to do marketing. I was looking at the technical aspect of it, the technical aspect of, of Garmin, you know? And so, um, That's and then a huge difference connecting with the customers, oh, yeah. you know? And so, um, it made a big difference because I was going from part-time four hours a night, maybe after work when I was tired and I wasn't at my best. And yeah, you know what I mean? To, I wake up at seven and I don't have to drive an hour to work. 
I'm at my best. I can focus and I put my effort into W. It was like dividends. You know what I mean? Like that's, that was the difference between half ass. Like it was working. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Laura was, was part time. We had the kids. She couldn't focus on it. Yeah. I had Intel. We had part issues. Time. We'd work through these problems or whatever. I'd, I'd do it on the phone or lunch break. You know, yeah. I didn't give my, my best time to W. But when I gave, when I quit, then you did. 100%. Like, yes. I didn't have another option. So I woke up at eight and I was excited and it was like scared and, and it was like, nope, we're going to do this and we got this to do. And, and so I started accomplishing things because I was using the best part of my time. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that I used to give Intel, which in all fairness, I wasn't. I wasn't excited at Intel. I wasn't in the beginning. I was giving them my best. I mean, I come in on that job and I was rocking it. Yeah. By the 14 year mark or the 13 year mark, I was half assing it there. I would do what I had to do. I'd fix the problems, but my mind was starting to work on W. So I wasn't giving my best to either company. Right. Yeah. But I was giving my best time to Intel because I was there yeah. at, at seven or yeah. seven thirty, and I'd work the day and then I would drive all the way home in traffic and I get tired and I'd come into W and I'd, yeah. I'd give my tired ass, you know, time where I'm like, oh, I need to go to bed or whatever. And yeah. so I wasn't giving, I wasn't doing anything good on either side. When I quit. Do you think you waited too long? Or do you think it was about right? Um, <laughs> I think for my risk, my comfort level of the risk and the family. Yeah. I think I waited a little bit too long, but not too much. Like yeah. I had enough income coming from W. I remember, you know, my, my manager at Intel, why they wanted to keep me. I don't know, but <laughs> you know I mean, like it, it was really good at some point, but okay. at some point they were like, yeah, what, what can we do to keep you? And, yeah. and, uh, you know, they were, it got on the, 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 the topic and I, and I told them, I said, you know, I, I have to do this. I said, I, it's not, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's not going to work. I said, but I just know that I have to try. And I remember yeah. telling him, I said, man, if you could keep that door open for me, <laughs> I might come back running with my tail tucked on fire. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like yeah. dead submissive. Like I'm not saying that's not going to happen, but I said, I won't know if I don't try. And I yeah. said, right now, I was just brutally honest. With him. I said, you, you shouldn't want me as an employee. I'm not focused yeah. here. I'm not thinking about yeah. your job. I'm not excited about your job. And so I'm in this weird area that I said, I don't feel good as a person. Yeah. I'm like, Give I'm taking money. your money. Yeah. I'm taking your paycheck, but I'm not giving you what, what I should be given to you. You know what I mean? I'm just half assing this to get the paycheck. Yeah. And I said, I don't really want to, I said, I do that. Anymore. I could push this on longer or whatever, you know? And I said, I said, I just don't want to do that to you because I wouldn't feel right as a, I said, I want to walk out of this job. I don't want to be kicked out. I don't want to be fired because I, I, but that's, that's so bad. <laughs> kind of the way I was headed. You know, I was like, yeah. man, I was, I was just not excited. Yeah. And so I said, I, I have to do this this way. And, and that's what I did. I walked out and, and it kind of gave me a sense of pride to be like, I own my own life. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I could have blamed, so crazy and cool. blamed them or whatever. But the truth was, is, you know, it wasn't Intel. It was me. You know yeah. what I mean? It was me that was not excited. I had lost the drive. Yeah. And I was half ass in it. I had some, yeah. some thing over here that I was trying to do. And so I had to just decide to say, hey, time to get out of this boat, get in that boat. And uh, it was the best decision I ever made. But I didn't know it at the time. And I was scared. <laughs> and would I do it again? Absolutely. I would try to find a way to do it faster. You okay, know, I wouldn't yeah. wait until I was completely burnt out of Intel. Yeah. But that's part of the learning curve. So I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't fault anybody for that because you can't, no. these lessons are all lessons that you learn. You know what I mean? But it's kind of um, how it goes. Yeah. yeah. You have to get to that point where you're like, man, I tried this and, and you want to just be your own boss or whatever it is yeah. that you really want. You got to wait for the right time. And the right time for me was, when my wife couldn't do it and it was yeah. like well and, and and again it boils down to the the end result was we were making enough money that it at least covered my intel yeah. check so i was like okay you know the oh the, that's kind of what i was thinking whatever it was i mean i, I think yeah. i was 
I want to say I was like 50, 55 grand a year or yeah. something making it until I was a technician. I wasn't making yeah. any big bucks over there, yeah. but it was enough that I could kind of at you least cover that, at that least. Yeah. and go, okay, whether I work at Intel or whether I work at W, yeah. I got that. And I looked at the W and I said, I can grow this to maybe accom yeah, accommodate absolutely. Laura's, yeah. you know, taking away Laura's, her part-time thing. So we got, you know, let's just say 55 grand from Intel yeah, yeah. and, you know, Laura would make, you know, 25 at W or whatever it was that we were taking out. So it was like those two things we could live off of that paid our bills. And then at the time I said, well, Laura's not going to work. She's going to quit anyways. So I can either pay somebody. And I was like, well, if we can grow W and I, I remember telling Laura, I was like the only option, it was like a financial decision. I was like, you know, this path leads towards bankruptcy, you know, which is what we were probably looking at if I, if we didn't do something, you know what I mean? And this path doesn't, or may, maybe not lead toward bankruptcy, but, but I can see that we can improve this path better than I can improve the Intel path. You know, it's like, I, I don't know how uh, I'm going to um, increase my wages yeah, from Intel yeah. as fast as I could do it at W. And so financially it was just like, I don't know, it's a risk, yeah. but, but I was like, I could, I could see on paper that I could at least pay myself what Intel made. So, so I, I grew something to the point where it was an easy step off for me. It was still scary. I lost the health insurance. I lost the, oh, yeah. the stability so and all that, bigger than, yeah. but I had, you know, we had enough success or enough that we were like, and again, we weren't running books. It wasn't, yeah. you know, it was all fast. And, you know, <laughs> so it was really dangerous. If I really think back on it, the amount we were taking yeah. out of the business without knowing the profit loss and all that kind yeah. of stuff, essentially we were probably taking too much out for, yeah. the, for the health of the business. Um, luckily the growth growth compensated that. And so right that's up. why yeah. whenever people, I was like, I got lucky in a lot of, a lot of times yeah. with the growth will hide a lot of problems. You know what I mean? So, so the growth of W hid a lot of problems that we had as far as books and bookkeeping and, and yeah. decisions and, and all that. And so you gotta be careful. And, and, and the growth is the only thing that saved us at the same time. So, you know, the, the Intel decision, the poor bookkeeping, the poor business management, me being a poor manager of people, you know what I mean? Like I've had my mistakes, the growth of W compensated for that. And so if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have made it. Yeah. So that's the downside. That's why I say, you know, learn your books, learn your marketing, learn your sales, because you may not have that, that forgiving growth yeah. that helps you um, make up for mistakes. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and there's been a couple of times, even, even with good books, even with, you know, I would say marketing or sales or whatever, and knowledge, I look at it now and I go, the only way out of this right now is growth. We gotta, we gotta <laughs> increase our sales. And so there's times where I look at it and go, wow, I know how to get out of this problem <laughs> growth. And, yeah, that's and so, so cool. we'll hit the, we'll hit the hammer down and, and do that. Um, luckily, I'd say the health of W as a business is getting stronger and stronger. The better I get yeah. uh, where I had, you know, years ago, I had some debt that was not exactly healthy because I just didn't know, you know, so I'd, I'd take this money and it was like, man. Yeah. And so the last two years, three years, I don't know, ever since pretty much building the house, I've, I've really invested in the books and I've studied the books and getting the books right. right. And learning how important the books are on the business. So don't, don't underestimate the books. Like you have to have good books. I would not recommend doing it the way I did it, which was, you know, half-assing it and trying to, to, to do your own taxes and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's not, it's not a healthy choice yeah. and it's really risky. Like I, I'm really lucky. So, um, wow. but that answer, yeah, yes, I would do it all over again, but I would do it way different yeah. and I'd probably be more successful. To be honest, if I watched the books early on, I probably would have seen successes and failures more much clearly, qu much quicker, yeah. more clearly. And I probably would have made better decisions probably. early wow. on. So, so who knows my growth, maybe even wait, I may be, I may be I double what I was, it. you know, I, I, I probably <laughs> lost a lot by not yeah. doing that. And, yeah. uh, I'm okay with that. You know, yeah. I'm happy where I am, but if I were to do it over again, there's definitely some mistakes that I would not invest in and be like yep that especially if i wasn't going to invest the, the resources you know so so there's some should i have 
I'd have extra 20 grand to invest in W rather than invest in street Some sweepers and yeah, you know, over yeah. the time street yeah. sweepers and, and shirts for tough girls. Yeah. You know, things that we just tried that never worked. Yeah. It's like if I would have just kept that money focused on the things that do work and the things that we were going to work on, that would be different. And so well, who knows what yeah. that 20,000 spent that long ago in the right places, you know, with, with looking yeah, at data sure. rather than just on a whim, you know, with yeah. a, a talk to a buddy and be like, yeah, sure. Let's try that. Or let's try this. Or, you know I mean? Like we just, kind of drifted through things um i think the business plan and the books would have kept you more i don't know more honest so wow thank well, you weird, uh, so much for having this conversation well thank you this is like i said i <laughs> we'll see i'll let somebody else listen to it it's it's not exactly about dogs but it is kind of you know you're talking about w and yeah and we got it's kyle cool. stinnerson the very first person to ever <laughs> draw to ever see the logo of W, you were the first sure. person to ever see that design, <laughs> that logo, and possibly the first employee. Yeah, I think the first employee. <laughs> you were you were definitely first employee, and then yeah. I think after that we went with uh, Katie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Back when we we didn't have the shop, we were just screen printing, and you were you remember, you missed screen printing. I was screen printing. I was packaging and shipping <laughs> that's a whole nother story the whole <laughs> we do about a hundred packages sometimes in a day or black friday we'll do like you know, yeah several hundred but peeling decals oh yeah. wow you never know what you're gonna walk do into I that miss day that stuff oh yeah because it was awesome it was a <laughs> wonderful experience yeah all right thanks kyle let's do this one here